Hello Auggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question from Anyone-JT, uh, Joe Thibodeau on Johns Island in South Carolina. He says, can or should ground radials be added to a vertical dipole antenna? The answer is a definite yes or a potentially. Okay, it depends. I live in an HOA property and was successful in getting approved a 28 flagpole, 28 foot flagpole antenna from Grayline. Okay, I'm using the MFJ 99, 998RT tuner at the base of the antenna and have not been overly pleased with the performance. I'm considering adding ground radials and I'm curious if this will be any benefit. It may be. The ground radials may help. What they depend on is what type of vertical antenna you're dealing with. There are two types. Uh, the traditional type is ground mounted and requires radials and lots of them. And you can, if you've got your flagpole mounted in your front yard, uh, you can use uh, like a little pizza cutter uh, to go through the grass like this, putting about you know, a slot like that, and right behind the pizza cutter, pushing that ground radial down into the ground. Okay, you get them all laid out first, then you go along and, and bury each of them, and then nobody's the wiser, the grass will grow over it, you can mow over it, no problem. I would recommend insulated radials, and here's why. Because if you use bare radials, they immediately start acting as ground rods. Okay, and you should have a ground rod out there at the antenna. The eight foot variety that goes straight down, make sure you don't puncture a water line or a gas line. Um, and then um, if the antenna is that kind, mounted on the ground, requires radials, that would help enormously, enormously, putting those radials up. Now I looked a little bit at your antenna on the internet and it looked like it says that it can be used without radials. Now, for it to be used without radials, it needs to be a full half wavelength long electrically. And they achieve that with the wire inside of the, I don't know if it's inside the plastic pole or if this is a metal pole. Uh, if it's a metal pole, it's gonna be a ground fed thing and you will need to have radials and the special adapter so the antenna doesn't touch the ground and so on plant some bushes around it. Um, but you, if it's the kind that is a half wavelength electrically, it's uh, end fed, and you need a ground rod to give the antenna tuner something to work against. Or you can have the antenna tuner work against radials. On the, there's two connections coming out of that antenna tuner. One for the antenna and the other for ground. So you can put in a radio field and connect that to ground. It may really help uh, your performance, but definitely a ground rod to connect to the antenna and radials may help a little bit more. A radial field helps any antenna. You can put radial fields, that wouldn't necessarily be radials, they could be straight and so on, down on the ground below it, parallel to it. And it can really help the performance by putting what is in essence an artificial ground under the antenna. So if you have a 40 meter dipole, put some 66 foot lengths of wire just on the ground underneath it, and it helps with the ground reflection. It's just kind of a general rule. So <clears throat> I would suggest you look at that 998 RT tuner and look at the instructions for it and see how well it works. I would also look at the antenna itself uh, without the tuner and get an SWR on that. Uh, if it is a multi-band radial, uh, multi-band antenna, it may actually not need a tuner, but having a tuner is not a bad thing to do. Okay. So go ahead and make sure that the wires coming out of the tuner are short, both to the antenna 
into the ground connection. Okay? So, like many things in life, we need to be well grounded. Giveaway number four is coming up. And this is giveaway number four right here. It's an antenna. It's an antenna by Alpha Delta. And it's uh, the model uh, DXEE. And it has traps for 40 and 20. So it'll work on um, whichever half of the 40 meter band you select. You can select like the lower half so you can work FT8. You can select the upper half so you can do sideband. Then it covers all of 20, all of 15, and the important part of 10 meters. Okay, so it's got um, a, uh, it's a fan dipole plus it's the trapped dipole. It's a very nice antenna. They're kind of pricey. It's built like a Sherman tank. It is very, very sturdy. It has another advantage. It is only 40 feet long and yet it will cover 40 meters. So, and it's got nice gray wire that's hard to see. Uh, this can be set up as an inverted V, even only 20 feet high. And so it'd be a great antenna in some HOAs that uh, will allow limited antennas, but not the great big ones. I kind of like this antenna. Uh, this was one of the antennas that I considered to be the reference station antenna. But because it only covered part of 40 meters, it was not selected. It's still a fine antenna. So this will be giveaway number four. So here's how you enter. I should warn you the thing is dirty because it's actually been up and it's been a winter outside. Um, here's how you enter. Send a postcard, QSL card, or a uh, simple uh, envelope with a single sheet of paper in it. Send it to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Send to me the giveaway number, which is number four, giveaway number four. Okay, put your name, call sign, your the address to which you want this mailed, it'll come via United States Postal Service, uh, priority mail, and um, also include in there your phone number in case I need to get in touch with you. Now note that I do not need your uh, email or anything like that. Uh, after the drawing, all entries will be destroyed, so there will be no record to worry about. Um, I'm not selling any information or anything like that. Even the winner, I'm going to throw their entry back in the box so they get that back. I'm not keeping any information. So here's a way to enter and help me declutter my ham shack a little bit. All the things that I purchased, I purchased this with channel funds, and now I'm giving it back uh, because I've uh, used it for that selection process. We went ahead with the MFJ 2010 as the reference antenna. This would be my next choice as to the antenna I would put up because it's only 40 feet long. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to support this channel financially, you certainly can. Go to decastlercom support and look for ways there that you can do that. Please subscribe. It uh, really helps uh, YouTube figure out which channels you want to promote to other people. I just had the opportunity to go above 100,000 members. 100,000, I'm sorry. To go above 100,000 subscribers. So until we next meet, 73.